This is the Jumper Easy Book 2. I've tried my hardest to put as many puns on the word jumper as possible. So I beg you, please don't jump the gun and unsubscribe. Okay, so first pun, here we go. Take a look at the specs. Nothing really jumps out as outstanding. So why am I so excited for this laptop? Well, in my opinion, it has one of the most well-balanced specs of any laptop or tablet. 1080p screen, 4 gigs of RAM, and 10,000 mAh battery. The specs are strong in all departments, at least in theory. However, specs can tell you a different story from the user experience. So before you jump to a conclusion, let me tell you the whole story. This is the MacBook Air 13, except it's not. You put them side by side and the only differences are a small difference in size and the jumper logo on the top. The logo even lights up, just like the MacBook, but the light isn't very strong, so you can barely see it, even indoors. Let's talk about the size of the laptop. Three months ago, I would have been completely happy with how big it was, about the same size as the Peepo W9S, and about the same size as the MacBook Air, but not anymore. I have one friend who has the XPS 13 and another friend who has the ASUS UX305 and they are way smaller than this laptop. I understand Jumper wanting to copy an Apple product since Chinese demand for Apple stuff is sky high, but those bezels are pretty big and honestly make this laptop look a little dated, and that goes for the MacBook Air as well. It is thinner than the MacBook Air though. It weighs 1.4 kilograms, so that's more than light enough for me as a guy, but there are much lighter options out there nowadays, like the ASUS UX305. You get two USB ports, one on each side, micro SD card slot, micro HDMI, and headphone jack. Jumper made an interesting design decision here. The lid is made of aluminum, but the body is not. It's plastic. I can see where they're coming from. They want the laptop to look nice when you're carrying it, and there's less metal in the lid. But I honestly would rather have it the other way around, because now the laptop is a tiny bit top heavy. Nowhere near like 2 in 1 devices, but still noticeable. There's a little bit of flex on the screen, but that's not much of an issue, because it's not a touchscreen either. Now the keyboard. It's a chiclet style keyboard, and the keys themselves are okay quality. They're plastic. There is a little bit of flex in the keyboard, but nothing too severe. The typing experience is not bad. I can easily achieve my normal typing speed, which is about 60 to 70 words per minute. Key travel is pretty shallow. I bottom out fast, but the keys are springy and they jump back quick. One thing I absolutely love about the keyboard are the full size arrow keys. Literally on every other Ultrabook, the arrow keys are super small, but here they are full size. One more thing I love is the extra row of keys on the right side with page up, page down, home, and end. They come in super, super useful. However, one thing I absolutely detest is where they put the delete key, right beside the power button. I keep on accidentally hitting the power button instead. Now the trackpad. Apple products have the world's best trackpad hands down. The Dell XPS 13 actually comes pretty close to the MacBook's trackpad in terms of quality, but it's not quite there yet. What about this one? Let's put it this way, for a Chinese laptop, one of the best trackpads I've used. When comparing to the MacBook and the XPS, well, it's pretty meh. It handles Windows 10 gestures pretty well. Scrolling at Edge is actually really responsive and accurate. It's almost as good as Safari on the MacBook. But scrolling in Chrome? Well, less good, but still not bad. If you do get this laptop, and I hope you do, I like it a lot. Change the mouse scroll settings from 3 to 1, as that makes the scrolling less fast so you can actually control where you end up on the page. In my opinion, I have pretty mixed feelings about the build quality. You have a high quality aluminum lid, and then a not so high quality plastic body. In terms of size and weight, well, it's been a long time since any of us have been blown away by how small and thin the MacBook Air is. And lastly, the trackpad. One of the best Chinese trackpads around, but pretty average compared to the best in the world. It's up to you guys whether you like the build quality or not. Ah, finally, a 1080p 14-inch LED screen. Even the entry-level MacBook Air only has a 900p screen. I mean, it's no Quad HD screen, but the screen seems to be a little bit on the blue side. It might only be noticeable to me since I review so much stuff, but it's definitely there. Other than that, the screen itself looks real decent. Watching TV, reading articles, and working on it generally looks good. Colors are actually not bad, as you can see in this Stardew Valley clip here. The max brightness is 250 nits, and the screen is matte. You have to look at the screen from the center, otherwise colors are off as well. This not being an IPS screen. But still, no complaints. The speakers are on the bottom of the laptop, so they do get muffled depending on what you put the laptop on. Not the best speakers here, but definitely enough if you want to sit at home to watch some TV or movies without headphones. The speakers themselves have enough treble and bass. Treble sounds okay, but anything that's bass sounds kind of muffled. Everything just kind of gets mixed together, and even then it's still good enough for most things unless you're DJing or something. Have a listen for yourself.
I'm not too worried about battery life. There's a big 10,000 milliamp hour battery here, so let's get right down to testing. I first reloaded a web page every 10 seconds and the laptop lasted for 7 hours and 12 minutes. Not bad. Then I looped the video and it died after about 7 hours and 25 minutes. Some good results and just a tiny bit below what I was expecting. Real life battery use is also really decent. Unless you're a super heavy user, you don't have to worry about plugging it in before the end of the day. For example, if you're a student with 5 hours of lectures and then you work on a paper for 2 hours before going home, you won't have to plug in before you reach home. No complaints, I'm very satisfied with the battery life here. The software is what has me the most concern, as I've mostly been satisfied with most everything else. And traditionally, software is where Chinese companies struggle. If Jumper nails the software, man, this thing could be a complete runaway success. So I'm happy to report that Jumper has done a great job with the software. It's perfect. Well, almost. General UI stuff in Windows 10 is smooth and responsive. Opening and closing Metro apps are fast, and browsing with Edge is just a pleasure. Google Chrome is where the imperfections start showing. You can clearly tell that Chrome is less smooth than Microsoft Edge on the same web page. And while part of the blame is on Chrome, which has become really bloated, other similarly powered devices like the Asus T100 run Chrome better than this. To put that in perspective, I could stream a 4K video from YouTube on Microsoft Edge for no problem, but on Chrome, well there's lag and stuttering and jittering. The 4 gigs of RAM and Cherry Troll processor are more than enough for web browsing, Word documents, and even some light Photoshop, well, or GIMP because Photoshop is expensive, and also some light gaming. I could play my favorite games like Hearthstone and Stardew Valley no problem, but it struggles with mid-range gaming. Left 4 Dead wouldn't run, and Goat Simulator was not playable. The laptop gets warm really easily right over the enter key, even when doing things like Chrome, but it never gets hot unless you're playing something intense. I ran Crystal Mark and the EMMC drive is decent, but not great. While Jumper didn't blow me away with some on-point software optimization, they generally did a good job with the software. Just remember that this laptop is a low power cherry troll chip, good for internet, word, and some light gaming. I've combined connectivity and the camera into one section because there's not much to talk about here. You already know what kind of ports there are, and they all work fine. And both USB ports can power my Western Digital 2TB hard drive as well. The USB 3 port is real and transfers at USB 3 speeds. It had no problems reading my 32GB Class 10 microSD as well. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth also work as expected. There's only a front-facing 2 megapixel camera that's pretty bad, but it's just about good enough for Skype. So for just 200 bucks, you get half an aluminum laptop, 4 gigs of RAM, and 1080p screen, and a big battery. I'm going to be honest, nothing really stands out in this laptop at all. Sorry, jumps out in this laptop at all. But it doesn't have any weak points either. Well, except for the webcam, but that's pretty minor. But that is what makes this laptop so compelling. It has no significant weak points, and it is one of the most well-rounded and carefully balanced Atom devices to come out of China. I very highly recommend this, and ranging in price from 200 to 230 bucks, it's pretty cheap. And it is replacing my Chewy HI-12 as my daily driver. And that is how much I like the Jumper Easy Book 2. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Be sure to hit subscribe and check out any of my other videos as well.